welcome back today our video is about chest tubes if you will be working in ICU or you will have an ICU rotation for sure you will have sooner or later a patient that will require chest tubes so what are they and how do they work that's what we're going to talk about it their indications how to also take care of them uh, although we're not going to talk about the insertion procedure itself there is plenty of videos about that on youtube uh, and again i want you to understand as an internal medicine resident or as a hospitalist chest tubes usually inserted and managed by the person who inserts them but it's always good idea to know about them have an idea about them and not to be kind of you just looking at this equipment and you don't know what's going on okay let's start and sorry for that long introduction to understand how chest tube works i want to refresh your memory about breathing physiology i will put a link to a video i made which is a part a video or uh, in my mechanical ventilation course I'll put a link to the mechanical ventilation from a beginner to pro course and to this video about breathing physiology where in details I explain about breathing physiology so please watch that video first but in brief let's assume this is our lung and this is the chest wall normally we have a force of the chest wall a tendency to go upward and anteriorly or outward and the lung has a tendency to go inward this is the chest and this is because of the elastic recoil of the lungs the outward tendency and inward tendency of the elastic recoils of the lung create a negative intrapleural pressure let me call it IPP intrapleural pressure so now we have a negative intrapleural pressure created because the different forces of the chest wall and the elastic recoils of the lung now there's another pressure in the alveoli itself we call it alveolar pressure which change of course go up up and down with inspiration and expiration now it's usually normally or physiologically it's bigger than intrapleural pressure and this gradient called trans pulmonary pressure so usually it's positive this positive gradient allow the lung to expand to have its normal shape now if at any point the intrapleural pressure increase and becomes equivalent to alveolar pressure or close to it that means decrease in the transpulmonary pressure that will affect the ability of the lung to expand and may lead to the lung collapse because this gradient is disappearing what do you think things that can cause intrapleural pressure this could be air like pneumothorax or fluid which could be blood from hemothorax pus from empyema could be just serous like just pleural effusion could be limb from chylothorax all these things will lead to increase in the intrapleural pressure here and decrease transpulmonary pressure and this will lead to the lung to eventually collapse so to solve this problem you can just guess that we could create an opening here for example and then insert a tube right here and this tube will simply evacuate air or blood there right and to solve the problem but as you see the tube here the pressure the, the flow can go from higher pressure to lower pressure what if the pressure here atmospheric pressure became higher then the air will go in and we making things worse actually we're creating more pneumothorax now and we could create tension pneumothorax and create problems so the first step is to insert a tube or a catheter but the next and as equally important is to connect this tube 
to a drainage system to prevent this sequence and this is what we're going to talk about next video thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released glad to have you on board